take a look at this truss bridge. It's a perfect real-world structure to guide our 2D modeling exercise. At mid-span, a rigid hanger supports an instrument package acting as a lumped mass to monitor bridge deflection. In this video, we'll translate this physical system into a 2D abacus model by creating four key parts, which consist of the bridge truss, the bridge deck, the rigid hanger, and lumped mass. You'll learn how to represent each component using 2D planar features and understand how these individual parts come together to form a functional finite element model. If you're interested in this video, let's sit back and relax as we get started with this video. Before you go into this video, I imagine you would have seen the other video that I've made, which is about understanding the Abacus CA environment. So we are going to be using that Abacus CA environment even in this video to sort of help us build to the parts. I've divided the video into two parts. So we're going to look at the theory behind the whole virtual domain presentation. And then later on, I will show how you can actually demonstrate that within Abacus CA. And I'll be using an example problem, which is the bridge model we see earlier on to illustrate what is going on in this masterclass. We'll start first by looking at this preprocessor image that was taken from the last video. And basically, these are the components of preprocessor activities that anyone modeling within FEA would be interested in. And of course, what you see here are the different modules that make up a finite element problem. And we are going to be focusing on the virtual domain part. And basically, what we're looking at here is a backup processor. A sub part of that is a virtual domain. And that would, could include a 2D or a 3D representation. For this specific video, we're focusing on a 2D representation. And just to define what virtual domain really is, it basically virtual domains are idealized constructs which house the physical problem for the computation to be undertaken on such constructs. So we're looking at this bridge deck problem. And so that's a physical construct. If we can idealize that, we then have a virtual representation of that. And I'll show you in a moment how you can do that. The finite element process is initiated from the definition of the virtual domain. Now, a virtual domain, therefore, must be a close representation of the physical problem in both dimension and orientation. And this is really important. So what we are going to call as parts in this video basically means that the virtual construct that you're creating has to have the same dimension as well as orientation reflected in virtual domain. We're going to look at that in a moment when we start looking at an example. So I've looked here at the 2D virtual domain. There are three possible ways that Abacus captures 2D representations of virtual domain. So the first one is that they can look at a point system, just a point, in which case all the geometry is concentrated at a single point. We also have a truss, which is a one-dimensional axially loaded structural member. And then we've got a continuum block, which basically is a 2D system with X and Y deformation orientation. So if we look at what the dimensions for these systems are, so the point is a 1D part. The part is also a one-dimensional problem in the sense that it only allows one kind of movement axially alone, the point also experiences one type of movement at a time without possibility of rotation. The 2D part has more freedom, so in which case you could look at X and Y deformation and tandem, as well as some sort of orientation. One envelope that brackets all of them is the type involved. So whether it's a truss element, a block, or a point, there could be a deformable part. So if it's a component that is deforming like a steel material that elongates and contracts, it deforms, so it's a deformable part, in which case it shows deformation, it shows stress strain, contour plot, and you can visualize that. Another characteristic is a di discrete rigid part, in which case it's basically defined by a node and an element, and they are actually rigid, so they're like rigid bodies that don't allow for deformation at all. So you can move the body from point A to point B. So for a certain kind of analysis, you may want to create your part as a rigid body instead of a deformable part. And the last in that series of type of material of part that you can have is an analytical rigid surface. And this is slightly similar in terms of discrete rigid body, except that you have the behavior defined by a continuous mathematical equation that describe what is going on in the material. So we then see two possible cases, a modeling space that can be 2D consisting of points, trusses, or continuum blocks, and then you've got a virtual domain type, which that virtual domain could be deformable, could be discrete, it could be analytically take our rigid body. And we need to bear that in mind. And once we get into Abacus, you begin to see this distinction very clearly. So the problem we're going to solve is basically a problem of a lump mass on a hanger attached 
to a bridge truss with a clear bridge deck. So the scenario basically, we've got a 2D bridge truss uh, that is simply supported and it spans a river. At the mid span of the bottom plate, we've got a rigid truss hanger that supports a hanging instrument package modeled as a lump mass. This instrument package is used to determine the mid, mid span deflection of the beam. We're not going to be dealing with the modeling objective that will come much later on. But for this specific video, Abaku CA objective here is to design the parts that are representative of the system. And that includes four components, the lump mass, the bridge deck, the truss structure of the bridge, and the rigid truss hanger. So I'm going to show you how you actually deal with this. So if we look more closely again, what this is going on here. So we've got the truss structure at the top here. We are sort of neglecting the effect of these little railings. And then we've got a bridge deck. So we are going to consider that. And then this is a rigid truss structure arrangement. And then this is the measuring inst instrument that is supposed there holding the structure. We're going to neglect the effect of these columns that are supporting the system. We are going to only consider one part of this problem, which is this region alone. And it's going to be done in 2D. So in terms of idealizing this problem, this is what we've got here. So the region in black here is basically the bridge deck. And okay, you've got the trusses that are sort of the key trusses that are there. We've got another truss hanger and then this is a lump mass which represents the instruments. And the dimensions are all given here. So 120 overall with a thickness of 3 meters and then overall height is 30 meters. And then this point is located at 0 and 22.5 and it's got an overall length of 22.5. So this is a problem. That's the virtual representation of this problem. It's not an exact representation but it's good enough for the problem we're trying to solve. And this is where the idea of virtual domain becomes important. Whilst yes, you've got a realistic representation, you may not always be able to do that. So what you can then do is to come up with a physical idealized representation, a virtual construct that houses the physical problem, which is called a virtual domain. And this is why in finite element, I tend to work with our word virtual domain instead of the geometry. The geometry is exact, the virtual domain is idealized. So if we look at the parts that we have here, the first one is the bridge deck, which I'm going to model as a continuous block, as a 2D system that will allow for the formation in X and Y direction with rotation. So a shell element will probably be most suitable for this. The next part here is a 1D wire structural type, and it's gonna be a truss. It's the second part in the model. And then the next thing we have here is the hanger truss. Again, it's gonna be a rigid structure, absolutely rigid, because the idea is really a connector to connect to the weight. So I'm going to model that as a rigid structure so that it doesn't deform at all because what we're really looking for is the behavior of the mass here so that this region will be idealized. Again, it's a consideration. Some other person may want to do it differently, but those are decisions you need to make in finite elements as in idealizing your problem to be able to solve it. And then finally, we've got the instrument package here, which got three dimensionality to it. However, for the sake of this simulation in this virtual domain, we're going to lump the whole mass into a single point and that becomes a 1D point as a lumped mass. So you can see that there are four different parts that we're going to incorporate into one single model. So we'll now go into Abacus to see how the whole thing is well set up. So the first thing we need to do is to manufacture the part A, which is 120 by 3 meters. So, and we go here, and if I just rename this, so I'm going to call it the bridge problem. So, and we click here, and so this first thing we're going to call it the bridge deck. It's going to be a 2D system problem. We know it's going to be deformable. It's going to be made of a shell element. And this approximate size speaks about the total length of the sketching space. So currently, our material is 120 in length. So 200 will be okay, 200 units. So if we come over here now, then we, I'm going to allow this. This is my zero, zero position. So I'll use the rectangle option. So if I click on that, it says what is the starting point. So I'm going to use the top left hand side. So which will be minus 60 and then my 1.5 in the upper direction. And then we now move on to this other side, which will be 60 and minus 1.5. So that gives you what you need for that. And that's all that we need to do. So I right click here and click cancel procedure and click done. So that becomes our bridge deck, which is a 2D deformable shell element. So the next thing we're going to, going to do now is that we're going to have to do the bridge truss on top, the top one. So it's going to still be 2D planar. I'm still going to allow it to be deformable, but I'm going to use a wire to create this because wire is a 1D part. Now it's going to be sitting somewhere at the top here. So I'm going to use some construction line to guide me how far I want to go. So I'll click on here. So I'm going to start with that minus 60 and 1.5 position there. And then I'll 
go when it's perfectly horizontal, I can kick anyway. So that defines the end of that. Then the back, the, this other side will be minus 60 again and 1.5. So that's where it is. And I'm going to make it vertical. So I'll put one in the middle here. And then on the right hand side, I've got 60 again, 1.5 on the right hand side so this defines the limits in which i'm working according to this diagram we say this distance is 30 meters 30 meters and if our zero line is somewhere around here so i'm going to have to create 31.5 so i'm going to create here 31.5 above so in the middle position 0 and 31.5 will be what we have at the top so that defines the top end now the next thing i'm going to then do is to do the trusses so i'll click using this system I click on that count one two three so that's fine then one two three and then go back here one two three then one two three so that's fine okay so this is one part of the system and then we can obviously make a linkage between here and there and probably up to this point the middle position so we've created everything on the left now i can go ahead and delete these lines because I finished using them. Now all I need to do is to replicate that. So I'll click on this and use this button. I want to create a copy. So pick my mirror line. This is my mirror line. The entities I want to use are these entities and then click done. So what it will do is I will create a mirror image, duplicate it and push it to that side. And you have everything that you need with this diagram and it looking okay as it's supposed to be. And then there's no need to close up this end because this is going to sit on the bridge deck which already exists so there's no need to put a truss there so we're going to leave it open and then i'll click done so that's that so the next thing we're going to then do now is to do the hanging truss so the hanging truss again this time we want it to be a 2d planar system discrete system because we don't want it to deform as I already said earlier on you simply want it to be a connector we don't want its deformation to contribute to the center deflection of this bridge deck so it's a rigid system and it's a wire and then we'll continue so again we want it to be on the other side like we did before we are having to put it on the other side so i'm going to say minus 60 and then minus 1.5 on the done side so this is where and then we know that we want it to be in the center so this is our center line so if you look at here this system is five millimeter wide so we're going to have to go 2.5 this side and 2.5 this side and it's as long as 22.5 in the downside now i click here so i know that this is 1.5 so if i go to the left i got minus 2.5 minus 1.5 so this is where it starts so we want to go as far as somewhere around 20 okay so this is 20 and then we'll go halfway down and then we go back and then you go back up here and then you go all the way back up okay so this is what we have here right click and then cancel so this is the system that we want so all we now need to do is to try click here so i'll go start from here to there 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 and there and then we'll go back so basically you just go through this process and that gives you everything you need and then we also have a central column that connects the system so this becomes the truss element in the way it should be i mean we can go ahead and delete this component so we have and that component press down shift and select both of them so both of them are derived and then we have a truss structure looking the way we anticipate it to be and then we click ok and click done so this becomes our truss structure and then the final thing is a lumped mass so i'm going to call it my instrument package so we know that it's a 2d system it's still going to be rigid because it's simply a concentrated mass more so it's going to be a point so we can't see any deformation really with it so it makes sense if we make it a rigid body it's not going to be a wire it's going to be a single point and then all it's asking us is to tell it the coordinates so we know that it's on the center line zero and then minus 22.5 which is what we see here zero and minus 22.5 in the down downside because our zero line is here so this will be minus 22 point so and then we get that so this becomes what we have so we've got all four parts exactly as they should be all developed individually and we can cycle through to see everything is in place now 
the next thing is to try and bring all the things together so that it can fit nicely. At least we are getting it into a state where we can work. So we simply go to the assembly module, double click on the instances. It comes up with this option that tells you, okay, this is what you have. So our bridge deck is there. So I press down shift and control, select the next one. Okay, this is the bridge truss drop. The hanging truss is there and the instrument package somewhere at the base and then click OK. So you can see now we have the arrangement that we have in mind. Everything is all ready. We can switch this to part instance to the show us different parts that make up the model. And everything looks perfect and correct in the way we intended it to be. But the essence of this video is to show us how we can realistically do all this and create different parts. In the next video, we are going to look at creating 3D chart domain. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do subscribe. So when contents like this are made, you'll be the first to see. Thank you for your interest in this channel and we'll see you in the next video.